The basics of the Affordable Care Act subsidy calculation, which is simpler than some of the clock mechanisms I have in my collection. Hi, I'm Kevin Knauss with InsureMeKevin.com. And one of the things I wanted to do in this video was to give you an overview of how the subsidy for the health insurance to the Affordable Care Act is calculated because actually it's rather simple it's simple math. Some of the inputs can be difficult to determine, but it makes a lot of sense on how the whole thing was structured. So there are three main components that go into determining the subsidy for the Affordable Care Act. The first is the household income. And of course, that can be a little bit complicated because it's called the modified adjusted gross income and um, there's lots of information on that but it's your AGI on your federal tax return plus social security income tax exempt interest and foreign earned income so you have to estimate that next is the consumer fair share percentage the consumer fair share percentage is what the ACA has determined is the consumer's fair share for health insurance, what they should be responsible for. And it is a function of your income. It's a little bit quirky to determine that, but I'll show you a graph. And then finally is the annual amount of the second lowest cost silver plan, because the goal of the Affordable Care Act is to make the second lowest cost silver plan, this benchmark plan, affordable as relative to the consumer fair share. But okay, so let, let's just get into it. So the subsidy formula, the first step is you're gonna take that income that you've determined, that modified, modified adjusted gross income, times that consumer fair share. And that gives you an annual consumer dollar amount that you are responsible for. So where does this consumer fair share? There is a specific, uh, specific curve. This one is updated um, most recently with the American Rescue Plan. And as you can see, as the income as a function of the federal poverty level, which is published by the federal government, goes up, then the percentage of which the household should pay for health insurance also increases and tops out at eight and a half percent. Now, the federal poverty level is determined again every year by the federal government. Uh, a little example, an individual, just one single adult making $50,000 a year, they, that income would be about 400% of the federal poverty level. Okay. If you had a household of three, making $50,000, that would be about 235% of the federal poverty level. So obviously that family of three, because their income is less in terms of the federal poverty level, um, their consumer fair share is smaller. You can see it's between two and 3% of their household income should be spent on health insurance. The single individual with 400% of the federal poverty level, they're looking at spending, they, their consumer share is about eight and a half percent. Now, that doesn't mean that they're gonna spend that much. It, it, this is just for the subsidy calculation. The subsidy that is determined can be spent on any metal tier level offered in the exchange. So going back to the first step, we have our income, and I, I just put in some just round numbers here just to kind of make the math simple. I'm, I'm not really good with numbers, so I need to keep it really simple. Income of $100,000, and let's say that equates to 8.5% of a fair share percentage on that curve. You multiply those two together, the fair share for that household is $8,500. I, I don't know how many people are in the household. It doesn't really make a difference. The fair share is that household should be spending no more than $8,500 for the second lowest cost silver plan, that benchmark plan. Okay, so now we have that dollar amount that the household is responsible for. So the next step is we're gonna be looking at the annual amount of the second lowest cost silver plan. 
Now, this is where the exchanges of healthcare.gov and Covered California are really important because health insurance and how they come up with a second lowest cost silver plan is zip code specific. Not all of the carriers offer all the plans in all the counties or zip codes. You, you may be one zip code over uh, from uh, something that has uh, four or five carriers, but because you're one zip code over, maybe you only have two carriers and that will change who is the second lowest cost silver plan. And that it's just really, really important. You can go to healthcare.gov, Covered California, put in your zip code and you can find the full amount on a monthly basis for the second lowest cost silver plan if you wanted to do, if you wanted to crunch these numbers yourself. But that's, the, all of these numbers show up on that 1095A that you get from the exchange, uh, the total amount of that second lowest cost silver plan. <clears throat> So we have the full annual amount of the second lowest cost silver plan. We subtract the consumer fair share that we just determined, and that's the annual subsidy. They call it the premium tax credit in the IRS. When it's chopped up into those monthly payments on a, through the exchange, it's the advanced premium tax credit. So going back to our numbers, let's just say the second lowest cost silver plan for this household is $15,000. Okay. If they had to buy it full right out of the exchange, it's $15,000. Now we take the fair share and subtract that. $15,000 minus $8,500, we are left with $6,500. That's the subsidy amount because it is the $8,500 which represents the consumer fair share <clears throat> and the way the Affordable Care Act is set up. It's to subsidize the remainder so depending on where you fall in that consumer fair share, you know, that's what the subsidy is going to be filling in. So you have to pay no more than your fair share. With the American Rescue Plan, that curve goes out. There's no longer a 400% federal poverty line level cliff. You can make $200,000. And if the second lowest cost silver plan is 10% of your household income, you're still gonna get a subsidy. It's gonna be the difference between the 8.5% and the 10. If the second lowest cost silver plan is 7% of your household income and your fair share is 8.5, there is no subsidy because it's already determined to be affordable. So that's kind of the, the big overview of the, the subsidy calculation. And you know, it, it makes sense for making health insurance affordable, um, realizing that we all want to contribute to our health insurance. Some of us are in a position to contribute more, especially when we earn more. So that's the whole point of the Affordable Care Act is to make the second lowest cost silver plan affordable. But of course, you can buy a bronze plan if you want to, and then you would be saving even more on your monthly premiums. Okay, that's, uh, that's enough, that's for today. Uh, if you have any questions, because this is all rather confusing at times, please reach out to me. My contact information is on my website, shermykevin.com. So you can send me an email, leave a comment, you can call me. I like talking to people on the phone. So for insuremekevin.com, I'm Kevin Knauss. Have a nice day.